Hey everybody, it's Cheryl Lawson. Welcome to Live FAQ. Today we're excited to have two guests and we're talking about vitamin D. Um, I know it's been in the news a lot and there's tons of studies, but uh, we've got a couple really great uh, guys here to help us through the vitamin D conversation. Dr. Craig Brandman and Dr. Douglas Smith. Welcome guys. Hi Cheryl. <laughs> Howdy. So uh, Dr. Craig, our viewers have met you before so I don't know that uh, we need to in do a reintroduction, but would you do us the honor of introducing uh, Doug and, and how we found him? Sure, that would be, uh, be my pleasure. So. Um, just to give a brief reminder to everybody, um, I'm Craig Brandman, I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Step One Health and we thought as we got into springtime here and everybody was getting the opportunity to get back outside and enjoy being in the sun and doing things outside that we'd uh, sort of remind everybody and talk a little bit about vitamin D and how important it is and some of the issues and questions that we know lots of people have. And so it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, Dr. Douglas Smith. Uh, Doug is a friend and a colleague of mine. Um, he has not gone on over to the dark side. Um, you know, he is still a clinician um, and sees patients and um, you know, is somebody um, because of uh, his position in, in Salt Lake and also has an outdoor life um, and is very knowledgeable and he and I have had a chance to chat about vitamin D a little bit and we invited Doug to, uh, to uh, join us in this live FAQ and answer some questions um, that, uh, that we've put together that hopefully will improve people's understanding of, you know, what is vitamin D, what's it all about, why is it important. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we'll share some of our personal experiences to make this uh, a little bit, uh, you know, more interesting. More. <laughs> there you go. Well, welcome, Doug. It's good to be here. Thank you. So um, let's get right into it. I mean, you know, Dr. Craig just mentioned the fact that he's in Southern California. Yep. Uh, I'm I'm in uh, not so sunny Oklahoma today, <laughs> and you're you're in Utah. And so, you know, we know that vitamin D is, you know, different and has something to do with the sun, but let's go back to, you know, what exactly is vitamin D? Okay. Well, um, I guess at a basic level, vitamin D is more of a hormone than it is necessarily a typical vitamin, as we would typically see in the stores. Uh, uh, so it's a chemical that is... Uh, created from cholesterol typically and then uh, the sun has a big factor in uh, vitamin D being modified and activated uh, in the skin of the body and so if I were to say what is it I would say it's more of a hormone than anything. So what are the characteristics uh, of vitamin D? What characteristics does it have? Okay, uh, Being created from uh, the general structure of cholesterol, it's what we would call a fat-soluble uh, uh, chemical. What, what does that mean? Um, just like if you were to dump oil into a lake, the oil and the water would not mix. So if you were to dump uh, vitamin D into a vat of uh, water, it would not mix. But if you dumped it into a vat of oil, it would mix. And so it, it would absorb into anything that would be more oily in nature or fatty, a fatty type substance. And so we carry vitamin D and we store it in the fat stores of our body. Uh, so that so is probably the main characteristic. Some of the other characteristics uh, functioning as a hormone, vitamin D um, engages with our DNA. It, it is able to go through the cell membrane, it's able to go into the nucleus uh, of the cell and attach to our DNA. And when it gets in there and attaches, there, there are some 2,700 different genes that it actually is able to attach to. Uh, and they've been able to see about 200 or over 200 different genes 
where it either upregulates the activity of that gene or downregulates the activity of that gene. Uh, and the products of that gene, which are typically proteins, um, are either increased or decreased. And then those proteins go out into the body and cause different functions to occur in our, in our metabolism in our body. So in general, I guess that's what you would say at a very basic level uh, vitamin D does. So, okay, so then here's the simple question I think a lot of people ask. Why, why do I need vitamin D? Okay. There's a lot of reasons, and I think we're learning more and more, you know, as you listen to the news and look at uh, Reuters and whoever, you see articles coming all the time of the effects of vitamin D and more studies. So I think right now we're really at the tip of the iceberg of seeing the full effects of what vitamin D does. There's many studies going on right now that are looking at different dosing and if we we know that we have uh, a certain disease state now is giving vitamin D going to help reverse that a lot of those answers we don't necessarily have definitive answers about but um, what we do know is that there's a lot of correlations between many different disease states and vitamin D. Uh, numerous cancers have an association with low vitamin D levels. Uh, multiple sclerosis has an association with uh, vitamin D levels being low. Heart disease, uh, significant uh, uh, correlation with that as well. Um, I, I would say in my practice, uh, there's a numerous things that I see people for uh, when they come in, that don't on the you know they look fine. People look fine, but they have these vague complaints that are very difficult to measure. And uh, over the years, I've uh, found that vitamin D is a very vital uh, substance that people need. And as we look at that as one of the potential solutions for many of these conditions and uh, complaints that people have, often vitamin D is a factor uh, in those. So there's many different, I mean, why do we need vitamin D? There's many different reasons. I mean, if you get onto a basic level for, say, your bones, vitamin D plays an essential uh, uh, role in promoting appropriate uh, bone health. And if you lack vitamin D and the calcium that you need to help with your bones, you could become osteoporotic. So your bone would have very low density and put you at risk of fractures. When I was in medical school in Wisconsin, I'll never forget a child I took care of in uh, the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. Uh, it's an African-American boy that lived in Milwaukee, so very far north. And during the winter years, uh, winter time of the year, uh, there was very low amount of sunlight. And so uh, I, I had heard about rickets and the and I was able to actually take care of a little boy who had rickets, which is associated with the causes severely depressed vitamin D levels to the point where his bones were very soft and he had very curved uh, shin bones and was not able to walk. So that's an extreme case of uh, vitamin D deficiency but uh, one that was very, very real early on in my training. So you talked about dosage and, uh, and the sun. So where does vitamin D come from? Where, where do we get vitamin D? Okay. Well, we can get vitamin D in, in some foods, but to be perfectly honest with you, f foods are not a very good source of vitamin D. Nowadays, Many of the foods that we get that are processed, they're putting vitamin D in there because they recognize that there's a deficiency overall in our in our nation. I think around the world you would say, especially in temperate climates, that would be a correct statement. Um, but uh, if you were to look at some of the fattier fish, uh, as in mackerel or salmon or tuna, uh, they have a higher... Uh, amount of vitamin D, some mushrooms, um, obviously milk is fortified, you see that all the time when you go and buy milk, it's fortified with vitamin D, um, but to be perfectly outside of that, you know, many cereals and things now that we can purchase in the store have been fortified, but uh, naturally occurring vitamin D really is rather 
uh, rare. And so for people to think that they're going to go out and just you know, find in their food substance enough vitamin D to take care of their needs is slightly naive. Um, vitamin D, obviously, we talked about earlier about cholesterol being kind of the backbone in that uh, uh, precursor mo molecule. And so uh, we take in cholesterol, obviously, through our diet, but then it requires the sun and uh, the UVB uh, rays to act upon that uh, cholesterol molecule and then we need a functioning liver after that, and then we need a functioning set of kidneys after that, um, and a parathyroid uh, functioning to get the appropriate balance and uh, modification of that chemical so that we can then activate it and use it in our body. Um, sunlight's crucial. So it's very difficult, and I think that's why you, you know, there's some studies saying 70% of our, our nation is deficient in vitamin D. Uh, I think because one, dietarily it's difficult to get it, and two, we're wearing long sleeves, we're in our cars all day when we go to work, we go to work and we're sitting inside, um, and so, I'm sorry, go on. Well, I was going to say, um, my mom's getting ready to take a trip to Africa, she's all excited about it, uh -huh. and one of the nurses uh, told her, you know, make sure you're going in the sunny season, make sure that you're wearing sunscreen. And, you know, she came back and, like, you know, the sunscreen industry is amazing. I think this was one of her first experiences with purchasing sunscreen. But that kind of leads to my, the question of, you know, how does the sun play a role when we're protecting our skin, you know, with 100 SPF or whatever the stuff is now? How can the sun play a role in vitamin D, providing vitamin D? Well, I think that's the problem is, you know, one, we need to protect our skin uh, so we don't develop skin cancer and other, you know, problems related to that. And so I think we just find ourselves in a very difficult position. How are we going to get enough uh, sun to get the vitamin D up? Well, we probably won't. And I think that's why you see so many people with low vitamin D levels and the consequences of those. Well, you know, um, that's, that's one of the things that... Um that's one of the things that I think I shared with uh, with both of you was that um, you know I live in California. I've got an outdoor life. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time with my kids uh, playing sports and watching them play sports. And you know I'm not a particularly fair-skinned guy, so I'm probably not as good about using sunscreen as I should be. Um, and when somebody suggested that I get my vitamin D levels checked. I thought it was, um, you know, not likely that there were going to be any issues there, but I went ahead and did it because I was curious. And as I think I shared with you, Doug, when I saw you the last time, I was, you know, completely astounded that my vitamin D levels were just barely above normal. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I've been taking vitamin D now for probably about a year, um, you know, and I've checked my levels and they're going up. And I don't know that I developed any health issues, but um, it was certainly a surprise because somebody like me would not be in the group of people that you would normally think of as being at risk for having low vitamin D levels. So, you know, right. just personal experience, you know, there you know, there was. Yep. Well, my wife and I both run. We live in Salt Lake, which is uh, on the most part, except for today, very sunny and nice. Um, we ski during the winter. We are out running and uh, real active with our kids at games and uh, I, when I had my level checked it was a 29 which is deficient and uh, you know we are active people but yeah I, I think that point is is that we do need a supplement and so I've supplemented as well and I've noticed benefits from it I know patients of mine that I've worked with and we've supplemented have benefited as well no. I think you talked earlier about the African American child, and so I know uh -huh. that's kind of a topic that I didn't know because I used to, before I moved back to Oklahoma, I was living in Southern California. I drive a convertible vehicle. I was, I thought, in the sun all day, right? You know, I thought I was in the sun enough, but I went through the testing and found that my vitamin D levels were I think really low somewhere around 11 or you know, uh -huh. 12 and started supplementing and, and found that 
that I had better numbers with the supplements. But are people of color uh, susceptible to low vitamin D levels normally? Well, you're at more risk. So um, any anyone, and it depends on the amount of color in the skin. Uh, the color in our skin is uh, caused by a, a pigment called melanin, and it absorbs sun rays, and so it it, it absorbs those rays um, differently. Now, I have very little melanin in my skin, so when the sun hits my skin, it's able to act on that uh, cholesterol much easier. Um, when you have more pigment in your skin, that sun ray is absorbed, and so those UVB rays are not able to activate as much cholesterol, or the, I guess the derivatives of cholesterol to activate it. And so it puts you at much higher risk. And so there, it's generally known that people with more pigment in their skin, darker color skin, need far more sun exposure than lighter skin folks. So, so you're much more at risk, and that's probably why living in you know, Southern California, you were at 11. Didn't really help me much. <laughs> oh, I get it. So um, while we're, you know, take a little break here, and uh, we've all talked about kind of testing and knowing where our numbers were, and, and uh, you know, it's not a secret. You guys can be a part of uh, knowing your numbers as well. And I'll add a link to um, the vitamin D experience that we're really excited about. Um, I've done it. I know Craig's been through it. And, and uh, what you do is you get your numbers tested, and then you check uh, another, I think it's 30, 40 days after uh, you've been supplementing to see what your numbers are. And that's through one of our partners uh, with Step One Health through the My Med Lab testing. And I'll, I'll add the link to that experience in the description for this video once we're done. But I think that's some really exciting stuff to go about. Um, the, both of you mentioned... Um, studies out about vitamin D, what are the studies saying about uh, the deficiency in, in, in vitamin D? One, that it's fairly rampant, um, that a majority of Americans have a problem with it, and that there are significant health consequences. One of the studies I always, when I would see patients, even for instance for depression, uh, there was a, a study out that showed that patient, there's a correlation with low vitamin D levels in depression. Um, and that as the researchers increased the blood levels of vitamin, vitamin D above a level of 35, um, not, and that's still considered at this day low, but if they were able to get that blood level above a 35 for over three months, they saw significant improvement in people's uh, moods and uh, their depression rating went down. I think there's a number of other, uh, there's heart studies showing uh, links and you know, that, you know, are they causal or not, not necessarily uh, definitive now, they're doing more studies. I think there's enough evidence out there for us to to say though that we're deficient and there's many correlated health conditions related to it. Craig, do you have any other examples? Well, I think that um, you know my experience is the same as yours, uh, Doug. I've read studies that uh, you know have quoted that as many as 70 to 75 percent of Americans are either at the very low limits of, of normal or below normal, and I think that I've seen the same studies about depression that that you've talked about and um, I think the other the other thing that has struck me as I've talked to other colleagues like yourself I mean you tend to be obviously very aware of this and thoughtful about it but as I sort of mention this to other colleagues as I see them in passing I would say that the average clinician really doesn't have an awareness of what a rampant issue this is I think that when you talk to them about it and you share with them some of the studies that uh, you and I have talked about and they go, they come back and they say to me, they go, wow, you know, I can't believe that something that is, you know, so prevalent was just not on my radar screen. You know, thanks a lot for giving me a heads up. So, um, you know, I sort of make a point of, uh, um, you know, I guess I'm almost a proselytizer about it. People are not avoiding me in the supermarket yet. But 
but um, you know, I think that uh, I am really, you know, I was really quite surprised. But I guess it, you know, in thinking about it, it shouldn't have been a surprise because I was really unaware of it, and certainly, as I said earlier, didn't appreciate that I was somebody that you know that had an issue as well. I, I was first exposed to kind of the idea of vitamin D when I was in residency with a rheumatologist, and uh, uh, what he showed is that a lot of the patients that would come to him in his clinic complaining of vague pains and aches in their body, thinking they are rheumatologic in nature, um, ended up being vitamin D. Um, his instruction to us was always if you could get their levels above a 50 um, in their blood levels, then you would often be able to see reversal to some level of the pain in which they were complaining of. I think that has, a, you know, our nerves use vitamin D in their uh, regulation, our bones, obviously. One of the more common things I would see is uh, elevation of a chemical called alkaline phosphatase. It's a chemical that's in our liver, it's in many of our cells, but bones are a major uh, location where alkaline phosphatase is. I would have a number of patients that would come in with elevated levels, and you wonder, is it a liver problem or is it a bone problem? Um, you check the vitamin D level, and it's significantly low. You replace the vitamin D, and all of a sudden, those chemicals go down, and the bone aches start to improve. Um, I've had patients come in with depression. I had one, and I always tell my patients when they have very low levels, it says, I, I don't know exactly what you're going to actually see improved when you take this, but my assumption is that you're going to see something change in the way you feel. Uh, and that's when they had significantly low levels. As we replaced them, uh, I would say the most common complaint that people would say after the fact, after getting their levels to normal, is saying that they had much more energy, that their thinking processes were vastly improved. Um, there were some people that would say that their sleep, they, they were insomniacs before, but their, their sleep cycles improved, uh, that they were able to get to bed easier. Um, some, one lady, I think she wanted nice fingernails. She actually was thrilled that her fingernails were growing thicker than they were before. I mean, so I would say probably 75% of the time, people would notice something after they actually got their levels back to normal that they didn't know was a big issue for them. But all in all, I would say the majority of people, the vast majority, uh, continued on the vitamin D because they actually found some benefit to it in the way they felt and their energy levels and their thinking processes. Well, you know, it's interesting that you mention that because um, I've definitely noticed that my fingernails are stronger and they seem to be growing a little faster and I was hoping it was going to make my hair go back to being brown, but <laughs> that, that didn't You happen. can tell it doesn't work on me, so. Yeah, yeah so, you know, so I don't know if you're looking for a hair improvement, maybe Maybe this... if I rub vitamin D on my scalp, it'll, it'll work better. <laughs> well, it didn't, didn't make my hair go back to being brown, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we talked earlier about testing, and that's one of the questions is, are, are there any tests to see what vitamin D levels are? Right, and that's an important one because a lot of folks will order the wrong test. So, uh, the test that needs to be run is a 25-hydroxy vitamin D level, and uh, that will give you the best estimate of uh, storage. Uh, form of vitamin D and total levels. So that's a, that's a critical thing. There's a 125 hydroxy vitamin D. Some people will order a vitamin D, and those are the wrong tests. So you'd want to order a 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Ah. Dr. Craig, any comments on that? No, I completely agree with uh, with Doug. I mean, it's important that. Uh, that the right test is ordered and so when people will go online at Step 1 Health and decide that this is something they want to check, they will find that that's the test that, uh, that we've uh, made available to them as part of the, uh, the vitamin D experience. Perfect. So, um, you know, you talked about vitamin D and how, how much we, I mean, how we need it and what it does for us and the things that may, you know, 
may make us feel better and, and think cognitively con more consciously and then have more energy. But how do we know how much we need? Well, that, you know, that has been a work in progress in my practice, actually. There aren't any national standards here in America. Well, the national standards here in America are actually extremely low. When you look at some of the studies the uh, Institute of Medicine did when they looked at vitamin D, uh, a lot of the studies that they did, they didn't base it on any baseline level of vitamin D. And so basically they treated the entire population as if they had the same levels of vitamin D. So in my practice I found that people that are at a 20 are going to need more vitamin D than people that start out at a 40. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, through my practice, I've actually developed my own protocol. And Craig, maybe you have some inputs. If you were to go over to Europe, the European uh, uh, Food Safety Organization, they actually recommend uh, 4,000 units for anyone above the age of 11. Uh, ages 1 to uh, 11, they actually recommend 2,000 units a day. And for infants, they actually recommend a thousand units, international units a day, and so that's far more aggressive than what uh, the FDA and here in the U.S. has been recommended. Um, I, over about a five-year period of time, came up with a protocol where I I really shot for my patients to end up at a level, a blood level somewhere between 50 and 70 is what I typically shot for. Um, and through years of experience, I, I came up with some levels that I use. Now, I, I'm not going to say that those are the guidelines that people should shoot for, um, but I'm happy to share them if you want me to. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, I, I agree, Doug, that, um, you know, in, in, this, uh, in this country, we... Um, we uh, we tend to uh, our limits tend to be uh, a little bit lower than what they are in other countries where they've been a little bit more thoughtful about it. Um, I take my supplement is a mycelized vitamin D. It's a liquid vitamin D, and the way I've approached it is I take about eight drops a day, which is I think about five or six thousand units, um, and I just check my vitamin D every 45 or 60 days. And my target is, you know, is 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 what you've uh, is what you've shared, you know, the ballpark of about 55 to 60. You know, I'm getting up into that area, but um, I think that that's probably the easiest way. I mean, this is one of those things in healthcare where we've got a good opportunity for people to begin to take a supplement um, and actually track their numbers and look at you know how well they're doing on an individual basis because not all of us are the same um, and um, you know once you get your level to the desired endpoint then you can maybe cut back a little bit and continue to um, to track your um, your numbers and adjust your daily input so that you maintain your the absolute value right so the numbers that I typically use, just to, if it gives somebody a reference point, when I had a patient that came in that was between 10 and 12, well, if they were under 10, so they were in the single digits, typically we were around seven or 8,000 units. Um, uh, if they were a 10 to 20, I'd use about 6,000 units. 20 to 29, about 5,000 units. 30 to 39, about three to 4,000. 40 to 49, I was about 2,000. 50 to 59, about 1,000. And then 60 to 69, about 500 units. So I, I, I titrated it and essentially put a dose, higher dose with the lower numbers. And it, you know, and then I would always uh, do a follow-up check. And I would typically do that a couple months later in that this is a fat-soluble vitamin. It will absorb into the fat of the body and then as there's a need in the blood levels or in the body somewhere, the body will then recruit that vitamin D back out into the blood from the fat. And so um, after a couple months, I would repeat that, and I, I had a very good baseline. I'd make sure that my patients didn't take vitamin D right before they went in into their blood levels, but uh, did it, you know, I didn't tell them to not take 
and take it the day before because uh, by that time it should have been absorbed into the body and into the fatty store. So that's how I manage it. And, you know, I can tell uh, in about five years, uh, five to six years of doing this that I've had probably one patient that was over the recommended level and they were about a 90 to 100 range. So, um, and there's many, many patients in which I've treated with this. So, you know, when we talk about supplements, going to the health food store or uh, to the drug store and looking at uh, vitamin D supplementation, you know, Dr. Craig talked about a liquid uh, form you know, what's the, what, which one do I need to get, I guess, is the question is, you know, what type of vitamin D should I buy? And I basically just recommended you need vitamin D3 or cholecalciferol, um, and that is the form that you should. Now, I've left that up to my patients of where they get that. Um, you know, most of them have gone to just the local pharmacy or GNC type, you know, natural food store and... Uh, and gotten that. Now, in capsule form, it comes in a 1,000, a 2,000, and a 5,000. And so, you know, I've just recommended uh, they use those in combination with each other to get the appropriate uh, number of units a day. That's how I've done it. So, uh, is there a right way or a wrong way to um, take vitamin D? I think that, you know, I agree with Doug. I think that um, the most important thing is to you know create an awareness about it, understand where your personal numbers are, begin on a supplement, and then you know recheck your levels after some period of time because some of the supplements that people buy may not have what we doctors call bioavailability, um, and so they may be taking something and think that they're getting the benefit of it but their numbers are not changing. And so, you know, as we have recommended for other things, it's important to establish your baseline, know what your numbers are, um, you know, embark on a program where you are actually trying to remedy um, your deficiency if that's what you find, but it's important that, you know, some number of months later, 45 days, 60 days later, um, that you check your levels again to make sure that the trend line is going in the right direction and that you're not just taking a supplement and not receiving any benefit from it. Right. Well, I think that was one of the next questions was, um, you know, how often to, you know, after you've started taking supplements, should you be, then retest? Uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I mean, my, Unfortunately, there aren't great guidelines out there, uh, um, and this is a, kind of a forgotten thing, and hopefully in the near future they'll have some uh, realistic guidelines, but it's been my practice to do it about 60 days. Craig, I think you just said 30 to 40 I, You know, I think we're in agreement, and I think that, you know, once you get your, you know, once you get your numbers back up into the desired range, and I think Doug walked through, you know, a really great way to adjust the amount that you take depending upon where you start and then where you find yourself going. And obviously as you get closer to the desired number, then you can begin to cut back on the amount that you take every day. You know, once you get yourself to a desired um, number and cut back so that you're on what we would call a maintenance dose, mm -hmm. then I think it would be reasonable to, you know, not test every 60 days. You could maybe, right. you know, expand it out to 90 days, maybe a little bit longer, or uh, maybe every six months. But, you know, while you're in the phase where you're trying to figure out exactly how much you're taking, you know, how quickly your numbers are going up, you know, and getting yourself to that desired endpoint, probably retesting every 60 days is probably what I would recommend too. Well guys, I think we've gotten to the end of at least this <laughs> section. I know we'll have tons more questions uh, about vitamin D after people start uh, watching this. Uh, it's been an interesting topic for me personally and uh, I'm sure it will be uh, something that people will will take away and start looking at their own vitamin D numbers. Uh, um, 
Dr. Craig mentioned uh, a lot of about the vitamin D experience for Step One Health. Again, I'll put a link to uh, where you can get started with that, or even just the uh, vitamin D test that uh, Dr. Doug talked about. And uh, hopefully, if you have another question or would like to follow up with a question, please visit LiveFAQ.com and, and ask your question about vitamin D. And uh, we'll do this again real soon, I hope. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Well, I want to oh, thank, thank Doug for taking the, the time out of what I know is a crazy busy uh, day. And, you know, as we get more questions and we accumulate them, hopefully people will look at this. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of, of covering, um, you know, most of uh, what's going to be on everybody's mind. But, you know, it's inevitable that uh, people are going to come up with some questions that maybe we didn't we didn't answer, and uh, once we get some additional questions uh, uh, sent in by um, folks that uh, that are interested in this, um, I'll bug uh, Doug again and get him to come back That's on good. and uh, um, uh, share share some of his thoughtful insights with us. Look forward to it. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks.